So um, I wanted to kind of steal a little bit of the thunder just because I have a lot of experience being on campuses. I've been doing this almost soon after I was hired, about 29 years ago, believe it or not, and I worked here at Hyperion about a hundred feet away in a converted carport that's no longer there. This plant has been majorly upgraded and remodeled. It's a very exciting thing. But, but I want to talk about the examinations, a little bit about the promotional opportunities, and, and the others. We'll cover some of these other topics. So uh, environmental engineering associate is the entry level position that we are looking to fill our vacancies here. It used to be called sanitary engineering associates back when I was hired. Boy, I'm glad they changed that name, right? Because it's like, it's hard enough to tell my mom I'm working at a sewage treatment plant, <laughs> yet alone that I'm a sanitary engineer. So now we're in all environmental engineering associates. Uh, when you first come in, you're, uh, you're at the one level, and then after a two-year period, you become a two. If you want to promote from there, and I hope most of you do, you get your PE license, professional engineer license, and you can become a three. And in rare cases, we have uh, associates at the four level, these folks are the technical experts um, that kind of want to stay working in their field. And they, uh, three is kind of like a team leader, almost a, like the beginning of supervision. Four is not a supervisory position. So there's a lot of, uh, some of us that just want to just be pure engineers. We don't want to deal with the human interaction and being supervisors. So, but you still deserve to make a lot of money, you know, at that higher level. Um, to really advance some of these amazing innovations that you've been hearing about today. Um, so when we go out to campuses, uh, usually we start in the fall, uh, we do information sessions, not as an extent as you got today, but we spend about an hour. You know, we typically work with the ACEs and the ASCE groups, because those are the two branches of engineering that we tend to pull from. Uh, and then also we do a lot of outreach uh, work with the minority outreach, the NSBs, the SHIPS, and the SWE chapters. Uh, sometimes some campuses have an engineer without borders. Any other organizations that you're familiar with and you want us to come and talk to, please let myself, Deandra, or any of the other staff know. Um, we'll, we'll get in contact and we'll come to your campus. We'll even bring pizza, because I know there's nothing like pizza to get you into a room to listen to, about stuff for about an hour. Um, and then that, that the culminate, and we also go to your career fairs uh, whenever we can. You know, we have limited budgets like everyone else, so we try to hit some of the engineering-based career fairs at each of the, of the eight schools. We typically do uh, eight campuses, um, but if there's another campus out there that has, you know, a, a, a general supply of qualified engineers such as yourselves, uh, also let us know too. Um, for example, Loyola Marymount isn't on our calendar. Um, they're very close to us, but you know, unless they can say we have a, you know half a dozen engineers graduating this year, you know, we're just not going to waste our time necessarily going there because you know we all do this. This is this is not my full time job or any of our full time jobs of anyone that spoke. This is something that we just deeply believe in, um, right? Because at some point we want to uh, call it quits, and and, and I personally want to have the comfort level of having you know some some of you sit in our chairs and uh, elevate the bureaus uh, to the next level. So what's really important is the engineering and training certificate. Does, every, does everyone know what the EIT is? Um, okay, because there are a couple I met this morning that weren't familiar with it. Um, it also sometimes is referred to as the Fundamentals in Engineering or the FE exam. This is a, a national exam um, that's out there. In order to to continue on as an engineering associate, to get to the two level after your two years of apprenticeship, you need to take and pass that exam. It's not an easy exam. I really recommend you take it while you're still in school, ideally in your senior year when you've taken most of those core classes um, because it touches on all the branches of engineering, right? Electrical, mechanical, you know. So it's more than just water and, and waste and stormwater issues. It's all the thermo, thermodynamic is on there. I can't even remember what those formulas were. That's so long ago. Um, so I really encourage you to take that because the, the disadvantage if you don't have it is that you're kind of under pressure to pass it. Now the city will pay for you to take a, uh, will reimburse you to take a review class. But if you don't have that certificate by Year three, it used to be two years, sometimes we can stretch it to a third year. 
we have to let you go. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts around that. There's just, just, it's just a union requirement. So ideally, you, you get it before you even come to the interview, and that way you're much more marketable, because otherwise it's a risk, right? I mean, are you going to pass it? And you know, it rarely happens, but on occasion, a few people don't have it. And of course, the IT is what you need to then take your PE. So if you want to become a prof professional engineer, uh, say in the civil branch or in the chemical branch, then, you know, which is what you need to become an associate three or a full engineer, a full environmental engineer, where you do become um, a first line supervisor, you definitely need to have that PE license. Um, so that's kind of the, the advancement discussion there. Um, so when, we're, when we go to campuses to do the actual interviews after you kind of, we've, we've rolled out the welcome mat, you kind of know what we're doing, and, and like a lot of companies, we generally kind of come in the winter. So you, you're gonna start to see uh, LA San City of LA Bureau of Sanitation or LA Sanitation around February and March. Because um, if we wait much longer than that, Many of you maybe have already lined up jobs or, 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 you know, or student uh, engineering jobs if you're not in the graduating class. Um, so you start to see us then. Um, now there's a one really important distinction. Um, you, you may see other city departments and bureaus interview, so you have to be careful at knowing which exam you're interviewing for. Uh, I think many of the civil engineers in the room are obviously qualified for a different classification that exists within the city, and that's the civil engineering associate position. So it's, it's not quite as environmental based as the environmental engineering associate, um, but other departments really look for civil engineers um, to do more traditional civil engineering type work, right? Bureau of Engineering, who helps build our, our treatment plants, right? We'll do the concept and we might do the pre-design work here in sanitation, we don't do the definitive planning and we certainly don't do the construction or the construction management. We, we shop that off to our sister bureau, the Bureau of Engineering, which is part of the Public Department of Public Works. Um, and we do occasionally have some engineers that go back and forth um, between the two organizations. Um, other city departments want civil engineers. Um, LA airports, you know, next door, or they work Palmdale, Burbank airports. Our port, our port is a huge department, right? The harbor, in the harbor area. Uh, they look for civil engineers. So civil engineers have a more marketability in terms of number of city departments that you can work for. So you can, you know, in all honesty, certainly apply for those jobs and take those interviews on campus with those other departments. But the key point to remember is you only can take each of those exams, let's just say you're eligible to do and, and interested in both doing the environmental test and the, and the civil test, you can only take each one of those once every 12 months, right? So, so you can potentially get two scores. Each time you get a score, you're on that list. And then as individual vacancies open up within, the, within city departments, they're required to go off the, the top echelons of the people who rank the highest on those lists. To, to conduct their interviews. So essentially you're doing two interviews. The first one is on campus, either as a civil engineer or environmental engineer associate, and you get a score for that. And then later on, as city departments need to fill their vacancies, they go off of that list and they conduct interviews in their headquarters, in their buildings, in their facilities. Does that make sense? Okay. So, be so, the, so the thing to be careful is DWP, Department of Water and Power, sister department, sister agency, they will go to the same campuses that sanitation goes to and conduct the same exam, the environmental engineering exam, and there's nothing wrong with interviewing with them. Um, it's a high paying organization, they do important work that relates of course to water in our case, uh, they typically hire electrical engineers for the power side. Um, the danger, if you will, is that if you interview with them because you saw them first, let's say they came to the campus in January and sanitation's not there till February, you're prohibited from interviewing with sanitation in February, okay? Because you can only take that test, it's considered a city test, you can only take it once every 12 months. So it's really your choice in which one you want to take, but just know you can only take one of those exams because you're only gonna get one in environmental engineering associate score, whether you were scored by the water and power that came in January, 
or you were scored by the sanitation team that came in February. Okay? So you're still on the same single list, and then as, again, as, as individual vacancies open up, um, you are uh, then picked up based on how well you scored. And of course you want to score high. Um, I definitely want you to stay for the interview skit after lunch that Christine and Christine are going to do. It's wonderful. I think a couple of you came last year and you're back again, so you can attest to how good it is. Um, but I really want you to understand the importance of that. Um, Okay, and I want to turn it over. So, so generally you, you apply through the, through the career centers. Deandra, as you met this earlier this morning, she's the one that schedules all the interviews at the various campuses. Um, you submit your resume in the city application, um, you know, and then you, you get screened to make sure you're qualified, right? You have to be, you know, legal right to work in the U.S., you know, those kinds of things, and have, of course, the 12 and 18 quarter semester unit, semester quarter units in you know having some wastewater stormwater for the environmental engineer exam so 